this year for the first time since I've been in the legislature, uh, the corporate tax is a centerpiece of Governor Martinez's agenda. Uh, and it has not been a, a centerpiece of Governor Richardson's agenda, but Governor Martinez wants to address our corporate tax and lower the rate and change the formula that's used to determine how much of a multi-state's uh, income is attributable to New Mexico. Uh, I'm encouraged that we're having that discussion because, as far as I'm concerned, any discussion about corporate tax in New Mexico has to involve, as well, combined reporting, which is the bill I've carried all these years to close this loophole where the last Western state that lets these multi-state companies expense their profits out, and it just seems crazy that our New Mexico businesses that are C-corporations and pay corporate tax uh, are paying basically at a 7.6% rate, and uh, these multi-states have a different set of rules. So I, I'm encouraged by that and think that there's a discussion that we're going to have on tax policy really for the first time, and it's a darn good thing we're having that discussion because uh, New Mexico, interestingly, uh, Governor Martinez in her State of the State address cited uh, last year, cited an Ernst & Young study that said we were dead last in terms of competitiveness when you look at our tax rates. And that, I think a lot of us were floored when we heard that we're dead last because I just never thought of it. We were dead last in lots of areas, but in the tax, <laughs> in the tax arena, that wasn't one that, that had been focused on. But what was so interesting is that we were dead last when we took all of the rates and just the rates by themselves and didn't factor in the almost a billion dollars of exemptions, credits, deductions that we've handed out over the years. So what we've done is created a system where we've got high rates, a narrow tax base, and all of these exemptions, deductions, and credits. So if you're a business coming to New Mexico, you darn well better get one of these exemptions or these deductions or use the corporate tax loophole to be able to avoid paying what's otherwise a high tax. It is not good tax policy. And I really think at some point here, and I think we're getting there, we have to do what we did in the state in the late 60s, which is do a radical redesign of our whole tax structure. Franklin Jones was a famous um, tax lawyer who worked on that back in the 60s, and that's where the gross receipts tax came in, which was a very broad-based tax on everything and low rates. So again, uh, the corporate tax is something that is kind of front and center uh, in the discussion we're going to have, and I'm encouraged that part of that discussion has to be about combined reporting, and I think that there will be we did get a bill up to the governor last year that dealt just with big box. It was kind of a narrow version of it. Uh, the bill was vetoed. Uh, and I think what I've heard is vetoed arguably didn't go far enough. Now, whether that's truly <laughs> the issue or not, I don't know. But uh, I think that, that you don't want it to do it in just one area. You really need to have this across the board. So that really is the, the right policy reason. But as we all saw in Washington, this stuff is extraordinarily difficult when it comes to tax policy because there's winners and losers. So we're going to keep pushing, and I really hope we can come up with a tax package in this session uh, that can broaden the corporate tax base, lower the rate, close a bunch of these exemptions and these you know, deductions that aren't working. That's good tax policy, and it doesn't have to be a Democrat or Republican thing. Uh, that, I think, would be a very beneficial thing for this state. So that's kind of a, a preview. We, we've got lots of different issues that are coming up. We've <coughs> edu got questions here, and, and folks can 18 questions. So we're going to jump jump right into questions. Vicki Ortega. Uh, 